Alright guys, before I start this video I just want to thank GoWish CSGO for recommending the idea. When passing through the safe rooms in both games you may have noticed some messages written on the walls, but these aren't just any messages, they are messages left by other survivors during the infection outbreak, which gives us a good idea of what life was like during the outbreak. In Left 4 Dead 2, there is a jukebox located on the first map of the Parish campaign, and when interacted with, it will play various different tracks, as you can tell from the colours on the front. But you may notice that over on the far right, there is a mysterious blue track that very rarely plays. If you are lucky enough to play this track, then you will hear Still Alive from Portal. This was a triumph. Still It's hard to write and state my satisfaction. This easter egg was likely included because the lead designer and project lead for Portal was also a level designer for Left 4 Dead 2. In the safe room of the finale in the Dead Air campaign, there is a cereal box on one of the tables, and if you look on the back of this cereal box, then you will find an advertisement for what looks like a Team Fortress 2 action figure. Similarly to the cereal box on Dead Air, there are also milkshake cups and burger boxes on Dead Center that also feature references to Team Fortress 2 characters. When Ellis has a chainsaw, he will occasionally yell this. And this is actually both the title and lyrics from a song by the punk band, The Misfits. In the safe room on Hard Rain, there is writing on the wall left by survivors Chet and Eric. But what's interesting about this, is that these are actually the names of two writers at Valve, being Chet Falizek and Eric Warpaw. On a cedar truck in the Dead Center campaign, there is a message on the side that says Disease Emergency Assessment Dispatch, which ironically spells dead when using the first letter of each word. At the end of the Death Toll campaign, the survivors are rescued by a boat, and later in the Sacrifice campaign, the player can find a boat half sunk in a shallow part of the water. This boat is the exact same boat from Death Toll, and if you're wondering how we know this, We'll take a look at the writing on both boats. They both say Saint Lydia the Second. In the Dark Carnival campaign, the player can acquire a gnome called Gnome Chomsky, and if they wish to, they can carry this gnome throughout the entire campaign for an achievement. But what's interesting about this is that in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, you can do basically the same thing, where you can carry a garden gnome through most of the game. Maybe that gnome will return in Half-Life 3. Throughout all the campaigns you may find bodies on the ground, that were not zombies when you first found them. These bodies may be out in the open or underneath blankets, and if you're wondering why these people aren't trying to jump your face, well it's because these people were actually immune. Not immune enough to avoid infection entirely, but just immune enough to not turn into zombies. In the Swamp Fever campaign, there is a charger hung up by his limbs in the shape of a lambda symbol, which is featured in all other Valve games. By the way, if you're wondering why a lambda symbol, well of course it's because of Half-Life's logo, which is of course lambda. That's it for this list guys, if you have any recommendations for a future video, then let me hear them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!